So hello, my name is Rob, and this is Cattle Rabbit Scale Model Studios. And in this video, I'm going to attempt to turn my favourite piece of Warhammer 40,000 art into a Warhammer 40,000 miniature. This is the piece that I mean. I've actually got this set to my desktop. I look at this every single day when I sit down to paint. I absolutely love this artwork. But one thing I really love is this guy right here. I think he's got such a cool pose, I decided that I would try and make him. There's a lot to cover in this video. It's going to be filled with tips and tricks like pinning, um, loads of just odd things. It's really worth, if you're getting into kit bashing, this is going to be a great video for you. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to need is a body. For this, I'm going to be using Lieutenant Zachariah of the Dark Angels. Um, once again, I actually got given this for a Father's Day present. I thought it was a named character. When I found out he wasn't, that was it. He was fair game. But he's got the correct body for what we need. He's also got the same leg raised up, which is a perfect start. The other thing, bits. I keep all of my bits. I unclip absolutely everything. Um, if I don't, I've got it organized in some fashion. This isn't my only bits box. I've got two or three of these. Um, I'm rapidly accumulating Space Marine bits like you wouldn't believe, which is no bad thing because it was an absolute godsend while trying to do this. So the first thing we're going to need to do is the body. Here I'm going to unclip and I'm actually only using his uh, body and his legs. I don't need the rest of this miniature. Now it's all unclipped. What I can actually do is start to test for everything. What I did work out is that the leg that's bent doesn't actually need to be glued in place. So what I can do is I can actually attach the other leg, stick it in place, and then the other one just slides up around it, which means I can actually remove it as I need to to make painting a little bit easier. So that was a bit of a godsend working this out. This is why it's really important to dry fit everything. Do it two or three times, always dry fit when you're doing a kit bash. And now it's just time to have a good old rummage through the bits boxes to try and find the other parts of the miniature that I needed. Some bits were a little bit easier than others. One bit in particular was an absolute nightmare, but we'll get to that later in the video. So this is what I managed to dig out. I got a few cool bespoke shoulder pads and things like that. Uh, quite a few selections of arms. Um, but I think I've got everything I need here. Now, I did have to take some artistic liberties as some of this stuff just doesn't scale well. But I found a sconce. This was from the Salamanders Upgrade Sprue. This will be perfect for the backpack. Although my guy has two, I think two either side is going to look a bit too big. So I just went for one in the middle. Then it was the gun arm. I think he's got a little plasma gun. I found this cool arm, but the gun itself was a little bit just too tilted for me. So I'm actually going to show you how to reposition hands with this part. As I said, there were a few cool little shoulder pads and stuff like that. This one has a cool like cloth with a Dark Angels banner on. The picture doesn't have that, but once again, I did just want to take some liberties. I've got some purity seals and things like that just to kind of gribble him up. And then it was a uh, head. Uh, I actually stressed out over the head way more than I should do later on, but I'll talk about that. Um, but I did get a few options ready. And then it was this wicked sword from the Terminator captain kit uh, from Leviathan. I really wanted to use this sword. It's so epic looking. Um, so I, I'm using that come hell or high water. Um, I did have a few arms choices for this. And in this video, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to show you how to cut arms in half, pin them together and actually make new arms as well. And you're not going to need any green stuff from that um, because we hide everything with the shoulder pad. But that's much later in the video. Now, the first thing was the sconce. Originally, I was hoping I could turn the flame around the other side uh, so it flowed the same way of his cloth because the, the flame would flow with the wind. However, I couldn't get a good enough um, adhesion on the part. So what I decided to do was get my clippers and what I did was just clip around the peg. And then what I'm actually gonna do is drill into the backpack itself and I'm going to use that as a uh, bit of a pin. Obviously I do file it off to make sure everything's nice and smooth. Once I've got this nice little pin I'll have to work out the middle of the backpack so it sits nice and centered. The way I do this is the two little lugs that sit at the top of the backpack and in line with the vents on the side you can actually 
go in line with the third vent and in the middle of the lugs and you'll always get it in the middle. And all I do is I twist my hobby knife to make a point and then I just drill into it. Once again, take your time. If you do have to up your drill bit size, I started with a one mil here. I did end on a 1.5 and I just wiggle the drill a little bit. Once I've got a nice hole, hey, I put a little bit of super glue thin just in here. And you'll see what I mean. I actually push the pin that we created by filing it down from the actual sconce directly into the backpack. Once again, I use the edges of the sconce, like the little side bits, making sure they're in line with the lugs. So I knew that the sconce was on nice and straight. And that was the backpack done. Once again, I followed the flames along the cape. Obviously the flames would blow with the cape with the wind. Um, it looks a bit odd, but I, I do think it, you know, it's definitely the right decision to go. Next up, we're gonna have a look at his plasma gun arm. Now, the first thing I need to do is remove these little pins from the side of the miniature, which I should have done before I stuck the black pack on, but it's just one of those things. Just carefully, using a knife, take your time, little slices, making sure it goes all nice and flat. So what I mean here is the gun kind of sits a little bit too flat for my liking. So what I wanted to do is just adjust it ever so slightly. Now doing this to Space Marine hands is really, really easy. It's a lot easier than what you might think, um, unless they've got those kind of assault intercessor guards on them, which makes them quite tricky to do. But all I do is using their little kind of wristband that separates their, I guess their forearm and their hand, I use it as a guide. And I'm not sure if my camera's good enough to pick it up. I will show you what I mean uh, just here. But I just get my blade, and put a bit of pressure on, and rock back and forth. Now, can you see that little band that I'm cutting? I'm just cutting the other side of that and I'm using it as a guide. Work your way around until you separate the parts. So I've got both my bits here that obviously would have gone together. And or as always, always, and I, I can't stress this enough, just file them flat. This will ensure that both surfaces sit flush against each other because when you're pinning stuff and cutting stuff, a good adhesion will stop any breakages or anything like that happening. Once both parts have been filed, what I do is I get my hobby knife and just in the center of each part, I twist it and I make a little guide point. You tend to know with arms because when you cut into the plastic and you'll see it here, there's a little white dot. This is where the plastic stresses as you cut it and you can actually use that because it tends to be in the center. So I always use that as a little bit of a guide just to make sure that I'm, I'm in the right spot, and which means our parts are gonna line up. Then it's just a case of taking a pin drill. Here I'm using a one mil drill, taking your time. I keep checking how far I've gone in. Um, it's a little bit of a patient process, but it's definitely worth it. Now both holes are drilled, as you can see here. I get a little bit of a paper clip, and all I do is I push it in, just to make sure it sits in nice and flat. And then all I do is a bit of super glue directly into the hole. And wipe off any excess. And then it's just a case of pushing the pin, a bit of paper clip in, letting it set for a couple of minutes. What I do is I push my drill back into the hand and I roughly measure how much of the drill is sticking out and then I use that as a guide and I just nip off my paper clip. I always, always leave a little bit extra as you can take away, but you can't put back on. So if you cut your pin too short to begin with, it's gonna be a bit of a nightmare. So just err on the side of caution. Here you can see I put the hand together and there's just a little bit of a gap. So what I can do is I can get my clippers again I can just nip off the tiniest amount. After another test fit, we go nice and flush. Always err on the side of caution, especially when you're pinning anything, as like I said, you can take away, um, but you can't put back on. So with the pin cut to size, I get a little bit of plastic glue, and this is why I always file the sections flat, so they sit flat against each other. 
a little bit of a uh, liquid plastic glue and then all I'm going to do with a little bit of super glue once again in the other end of the pin I can actually position it now I do find that liquid super glue um, which I use which is a really really cheap stuff it cost me about a pound you don't get much of a working time so if you're not too sure go with a super glue gel as it's a little bit thicker it just takes that little bit longer to cure so you can actually play around with it so that arm's done uh, I'm not going to say too much about it I'd rather show you at the end let's move on to the sword arm now in the picture obviously he's holding his arm nice and down it's all very stoic heroic I didn't have an arm like that that I could use but I did have this great sword arm which had a really good position for the actual blade the only problem is it attached from the side not from the shoulder so it was it was going outwards so no matter what we can actually do I'm going to trim this one because this arm actually has the perfect angle that we need so by trimming it and filing it flat and then joining the arm as you can see here this is kind of like the position we want but we want the arm hanging down a little bit more so this was probably the most work that I did all I do is to begin with I just get my clippers and I just start cutting it away in little tiny sections once again you can take away you can't put back on if you accidentally cut off too much it might look a little bit odd however the way I'm doing this by joining it at the shoulder as opposed to like joining it halfway down the arm is the actual pauldron itself will hide any of the, like the work that might be I guess visible or a little bit shoddy I guess so I try not to worry too much about it but once both parts run clipped as you can see this is what I mean it's all been filed flat and I have attached a little bit of a pin to it same again I'm just going to drill directly into this part of the arm and what I can actually do is pop that shoulder thing and all I've done is basically replace the shoulder joint which is going to allow my arm to hang down where I need it to so far so good so easy just take your time make sure once again everything's filed nice and flat when you do come to join it I'm not going to join it just yet because I'm going to swap over the blade because I was hell-bent on using this really cool blade to do this all I do is I get my hobby knife and I nip it off just below the hilt off goes the sword now for this I want to use the hilt and I want to use the pommel because it will actually give a little bit of length to the actual handle and it will just make it look that little bit more epic so what I do is I drill all the way through the handle with my finished drill bit once again I'm using a one mil drill bit I make a little point as a guide and then I just start twisting away I'm letting the drill do the drilling I'm not putting any force on it or anything like that and I'm just taking my time making sure that I'm not going straight or going through anything um, here you can see that I'm just coming out the top here take your time when you're drilling all the way through this you don't have to you could just drill into a little bit however I find having a pin running all the way through it just gives you that much more of a better I guess kind of hold and it's definitely the preferred way of doing it so I've got my parts, I've got my, my hand with his handle, I've got the little pommel and I've got the saw blade. I've drilled into all of these, and then it's just a case of getting a really nice straight bit of paper clip. You can get things like brass rod that obviously will match the size of your drill bit exactly, but I do think that these are just you know more than adequate, especially for the average hobbyist. So what I do is I actually jab the actual pin into the super glue this time and then I push the hilt uh, the blade sorry all these sort of things of parts of swords I just I'm, I'm rubbish with stuff like this but I push it on and I hold it for a couple of minutes just to make sure it dries nice and straight then I've nipped off any excess um, paper clip once again a little bit of super glue fin just around the hilt where it's going to meet the hand I put some super glue once again along the paper clip by jabbing it in down the nozzle and then what I do is I push the handle all the way up to it making sure that it's dead on and then I leave it to dry for a couple of minutes then it's just a case once again of cutting off any excess and repeating the process with the pommel a little bit of super glue fin a little bit of 
uh, normal super glue and just pushing it on. And that was the sword arm. I then attached the shoulder to the actual miniature so it just hung down. Once again, a little bit of super glue just on the pin. Obviously, I couldn't get the nozzle in there this time, so I just had to look, put a little bit on. A little bit of super glue fin around the joint. Once again, this is why I stress it always file your joints nice and flat. And it's just a case of pushing it up into the shoulder blade and just gently knocking it into position. With the shoulder pad glued on, this is where I am. As you can see here, we've kind of got the pose that we wanted. He's kind of got that sword arm down. And so far, so good. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is the head. Now, I had this head. It's kind of like a knightly one. The guy in the picture has a hood. Um, they do have one like that uh, from the veterans kit, but I've already used it on one of my uh, veteran stone guards. They do have the screamer one, but I just didn't think it was a good representation and I'd already used it. I didn't want to pay £22 for another head. So I was kind of stressing about it, thinking, oh God, you know. I did pick up this cool third party bit. This is from Archie's Forge, this cool winged helmet. However, I'm gonna do my Lion's Guard with these on probably. So I didn't want them matching. So in the end, I was just, I, do you know what? I'm gonna go with the Knight's head. Um, if I was a little bit better or more, I guess, capable with green stuff I probably would have used that but for the minute I'm just going to blue tack the head on as I'm not sure what position I want him looking in yet but I'll put him on the little spinny thing now and we'll uh we'll have a look at him and there's our guy as you can see here, I've stuck some purity seals on uh, his shoulder pads. See the guy in the had picture had loads, but they don't scale so well, so you can't get that many on. Uh, I did find another little bit from the Zachariah kit as well uh, after I recorded this, uh, which I probably will put on. Um, but actually, really, really, really happy how this guy turned out. Uh, I really like 10th edition and attaching HQs and things like that to units. I think that it opens up a hell of a lot of doors to making your own miniatures and it's really, really inspired me to do that. I'm also really, really chuffed that I've got this guy in, I guess, plastic miniature form. Uh, I will be painting this guy up. So if you are interested in seeing me paint him, I will be doing it eventually. Head over to my Instagram, I'll leave links below or anything in the description, I'll leave in the links below, uh, blah, blah, blah. Once again, this one's been uh, a bit of a long one. Uh, thanks for sticking around if you are still here. Um, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. I'll see you in the next one. God bless and take care.